Welcome back to Science Seal Delivered Summer on Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark Review podcast. I'm Megan, and I'm a longtime Hallmark movie fan. I'm Wendy. I'm a former Hallmark hater. Today, we are discussing Science Seal Delivered Higher Ground, which originally premiered on February 19th, 2017 on what was then Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. Hang out with us when the podcast is over. We love chatting with you on Instagram where we are girls gone Hallmark. That's where you're going to find us talking all things Hallmark, all things about the podcast. We do have a second Instagram account, which is Megan and Wendy, which is everything else. (laughs) Everything in the kitchen sink, right? That is not wrong. We have a great Facebook group. We would love for you to join. It is also called Girls Gone Hallmark, but it is in the Facebook groups universe. I'm going to leave a link in our show notes. We'd love for you to join today. And if Twitter slash X is more your thing, we are there as simply Gone Hallmark. We also love hearing from you if you have more to say than can fit in a social media comment. You can email us anytime, girlsgonehallmark at gmail.com. We love reading your emails. Speaking of emails, I know it has been a minute since our last Science Seal Delivered episode, a month, in fact, since the last episode, but on one of the final episodes before our Christmas in July break, we did pose a question to the postables and we said, are you a science seal delivery person or are you a Hallmark person? Like, where's the crossover? We got lots of feedback. Oh. And I want to say that a lot of the hardcore postables are science seal delivered first, maybe Hallmark second. Really? I think there's a... Hallmark is just the vehicle for science. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And so I think there's there's like a couple of groups here, right? We've got the postables, who for them, Science Seal Delivered is like the banner programming. And occasionally they'll watch other things Hallmark, but it's not the Hallmark that they're here for. It's the Science Seal Delivered of it all. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the people who I would say... Perhaps the vast majority of our Facebook group members who are Hallmark movie and series watchers who have also come to appreciate Science Seal Delivered. I wanted to read one email, if I may. Yeah. From Jan, who says, hey, girls, I wanted to address the Our Postables Hallmark fans or just Science Seal Delivered fans. There are some pretty staunch sign seal delivered is the only thing I'll watch on Hallmark folks for sure. However, there are also a lot of us that watch regular Hallmark offerings as well while still holding on to sign seal delivered as the benchmark. I figure if I want more sign seal delivered, I also need to support the brand that airs it because no channel can survive on a single series. And I do love rom-coms and Christmas. I have genres I'm likely to avoid, like royal (laughs) storylines and those set abroad. But even in those categories, I have found a few I really enjoy. All the best, Jan. I thought that really well encapsulated the conversation. Yeah, that's so interesting to me. Um, You know, it's like there's, like, the Tyler Hines fan is not really watching or maybe watching Science Seal Delivered, but it's not super invested in it. Yes, that's a good point. I think there are people who are like single issue watchers, like the Tyler Hines fan, the Science Seal Deliver fan, the mystery, the sleuthers, shall I say. Mm-hmm. One thing that someone had said was, you know, obviously Hallmark puts out a ton of content. And you and I know not all programming is created equal. And so people want to use their watching time wisely Mm -hmm. and don't necessarily want to buy in on every single new thing that Hallmark puts out because they don't have a podcast to produce. And then maybe they wait to see like what hits. (laughs) Well, good. I hope they tune into our our podcast to, to know if, you know, to find out if they should watch it or not. It's the perfect companion. It is. Absolutely. Let's hear a synopsis for Higher Ground. It is Uh, really messing me up that back-to-back movies are Higher Ground and Home Again. The H's? And the G's of it all. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay, for Higher Ground, this synopsis is as follows. The postal detectives reunite a couple 
separated by the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Kind of leaving out some key elements in the synopsis. For sure. Synopsis writer. All right, news and notes. Kevin Fair did direct Higher Ground. And this episode was written by the Dream Team, Martha Williamson and Brandy Harkonnen. Returning supporting cast in Higher Ground includes Gregory Harrison as Joe O'Toole, Zach Santiago as Ramon Rodriguez, and Mark Valley as Steve. Keb Mo plays Gabe. Keb Mo has five Grammys, like non- nominations, actual awards. He is a singer, songwriter, and guitarist. He does also have 20 acting credits. He was in the 2020 movie Elvis, and he does return to Hallmark for Sign Seal Delivered to the Altar. Karen Holness plays Hattie, she has 136 acting credits and has appeared in a number of Hallmark projects, including The 27 Hour Day, Christmas at the Plaza, Christmas Town, and The Christmas Train, just to name a few. Get out your bingo cards, friends, as she was also in one episode of Date My Dad and one episode of Once Upon a Time. B.J. Harrison makes a brief appearance as Violet. B.J. Harrison needs no introduction as she has 142 acting credits and is a regular on Hallmark, most recently in Crime Time Freefall and Sealed with a List. She will appear alongside Karen Holness in the upcoming non-Hallmark series Kinships, also starring Hallmark regular Karen Soltis, which is currently in post-production. B.J. is also in the cast of the long-promised series Holidays, and peek behind the curtain, it's early July. There is expected to be quite a few announcements at the TCA Summer Press Tour coming up in just a few days here. That will have already happened by the time this episode airs. So I'm hoping we get some Holidays news there. And something, I hope. I mean, I feel like it's been in the can for two years and still waiting for it. (laughs) What's your first impression of Higher Ground? My first impression is, while I've never been more excited for a kiss since Rachel and Ross, (laughs) the reunification of Gabe and Hattie and Norman's proposal to Rita had me sobbing. How many amazing moments did this movie have? There, You could not possibly pick, like a pinnacle. I fully agree agree with you. Who would have thought that our long-awaited kiss would almost be not overshadowed, but certainly have some competition? My first impression is this movie should be a masterclass in directing. Ooh, look at that. examples to come. Oh, I can't wait to hear more. Please know that I know absolutely nothing about directing movies or television, (laughs) but some things really hit with me. I think that is a lot of the director's purpose. They want yeah, to obviously feel a most way. Yeah, most people don't know anything about what it means to direct a movie. They only know what it means to watch one, and that's why I think my opinion is valid here. Okay, all right. <laughs> Let's talk what you like. Oh, Jinx! It's a little multi-layered. Let me get into it. I really loved the mission in this mm-hmm. movie. I know I have talked to previous movies, and I'm like. It doesn't really do it for me. I'm more invested in the relationships of, you know, our postables, etc. This story was so moving to me. Mm. I really admire how Martha and Brandy handle significant, tragic events with such delicacy. Mm-hmm. We saw it with 9-11. Yes. And, and the series... We see it here with Hurricane Katrina. We're going to see it again in the next movie as well. Spoiler alert. So I I really enjoyed that. I loved Keb Moe and Karen Holness as Gabe and Hattie. I was really invested in their story and their reunification of them finding each other. I just thought it was so well executed. I'm glad you said that because when I was thinking of first impressions, my other first impression was going to be, I think this might be my favorite postal mission. And I couldn't decide if it was just recency bias or if it was just that powerful. And I think it might be a little bit of both. Uh, Obviously, it's top of mind. And I'm sure if I went back, a lot of these stories were very meaningful. But 
I agree with you that I was so invested on this postal mission. It's incredibly well done. I agree. I feel like Gabe's hope and like staying true to his word to Hattie really moved me when he has this whole conversation on the steps with Oliver on the steps of the Capitol building. The Capitol building. Thank you very much. I just was so moved by it. And I could see that Oliver like felt the same way about Shane. Like they were connecting over this, like staying true to their person and their word. It really moved me. I think it really speaks to the aftermath of Katrina because so many people were displaced. Like it really brings it on home how the, it just their lives were turned upside down and in many ways never the same. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's unusual that people were separated from people that they knew and loved and perhaps never found their way back to them. Right. It wasn't like they kept like great records of who was sent where. They were just when they were evacuating people, time was of the essence. I feel like we don't talk about Hurricane Katrina. Oh, for and, sure. And, and the aftermath of it. Like, we don't talk about it enough. Like, it's such, like, a tragic event, you know? I, maybe because we live in California and it's so far from us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the idea of that level of natural disaster causing yes. so much disruption. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway, I have a couple more likes, but this kind of ties up the Gabe and Hattie story. Yeah. I loved the music from Keb Mo that was used throughout this movie. Mm-hmm. Shane talks at one point with Oliver about how the blues like is pain set to music. And it just so nicely parallels Gabe's song is used throughout the movie. He has so much pain, like losing this woman and trying to find her. And it's a very nice parallel with what's going on with Oliver and Shane. I just loved it. Love, 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 loved it. I agree. I want to talk about a few scenes that I think were particularly powerful because of the direction of them. Yes. First of all, the first kiss that we don't see. Oh but my God, right? still brings it like the way just their hands move. <laughs> and I knew, obviously, because everyone had talked about this being the movie with the kiss, I knew we were going to get an actual kiss, but I loved that decision there. Yeah. When Steve comes to get Shane at her home mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Oliver is there and you know, they need to leave right away. So Oliver and Steve have their little interaction and then Oliver walks away and Steve oh. sits on the swing. And as yeah. Oliver is walking away, you see Steve in the background and the swing squeaks. Yeah, There is not 100 pages of dialogue that you could write that would send <laughs> a stronger message than that moment. Everything about it, amazing. And then later in the movie when he's like, your little life with your squeaky swing. I just thought, you just don't get it at all. You just don't get it at all. And finally, in the final scene, when I actually don't know if it's the final scene, but towards it's, I believe it is, Oliver and Shane have their reunification moment in the DLO and they kiss. Mm -hmm. There's, after that, they're being shot from above. They're facing each other. They're holding hands. And, All around them on the floor are the letters that Shane has written to him. And while still holding her hands, Oliver kneels down on Uh, one knee and looks her in the eye and then moves to pick up all the letters. And I was like, you can't tell me that's not intentionally foreshadowing that moment. That's not driving home the permanency of their relationship. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. I know. I even was like, (gasps) but, you know. (laughs) Yeah, we need to let Rita and Norman have their own proposal movie. Totally. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so I want to back it up just a second. The out-of-shot kiss that you mentioned, what a perfect tease. And I was like, while watching, I was like, how could they have not shown us? And then then I was like, did they? Didn't they? 
Did they just have this intimate moment? It was so great. It was such a great decision. I love, love that Kevin Fair did that. Don't you think it makes the viewer that much more anxious for Shane to come home as much as Oliver is anxious for her to come home? Like, we need to see where this is going. You need to come back. Yes, and especially the conversation between Oliver and his dad. And Oliver says, I had a kiss and a brief one. And Joe's like, well... Next time, make it last or I, whatever yeah, he said. I couldn't yeah. remember. It, yeah, good stuff. Good, good stuff. And then the squeaky swing. You're right. That was perfection. That whole scene with Steve sitting on it and it's squeaking. But prior to that, when she's like, it was almost like, do you want to come back to my house for a nightcap? Do you want to uh-huh. come back and check out my squeaky uh-huh. swing? <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. And to go along with that, prior to that, before their date, they're in the office and she says, you know, I know you want to keep things professional, but you can call me Shane at work. And Oliver says what might be the hottest line in the entire Sign Seal Delivered series. He practically growls it when he says, tomorrow night, I fully intend to call you Shane, Ms. McInerney. (laughs) I'm just like a puddle. I'm cooked. <laughs> are we reading into these lines? Like, no, are we no, to make it no, no. Spicy? You cannot tell me that that wasn't intentionally still perfectly appropriate for television. But there was, oh, whether you want to make it sweet and romantic or spicy, the choice is yours. Nevertheless, it's a great line. And I, there is zero doubt in my mind that Eric Mabius knew what he was doing. I love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, speaking of Eric, I loved when Oliver confronts Steve about Shane's whereabouts when he flies off to Virginia and he wants to see Steve and he's like, where is Shane? Where is Shane? He's just, you know, it's a little bit of like, he's always like this great stand up guy who can articulate anything, Right. Mm-hmm. In this moment, though, he's like, where the F is Shane? Like, he's had yes. enough. And I Where's loved my it. girl? Yeah, I loved it. Loved, loved that scene. And even when he finally sees Shane and he pulls this, like, I know he was fibbing hair, but he was trying to get her to come home with him, right? Where he, like, lies to her about he got information that Steve was, like, holding Oh, yeah, the mission was wrapped. Which was untrue, but I I appreciated his effort and then it was kind of, like, a little bit of levity to the whole scene as well, because she's like, yeah, that's not true, you know? I just I thought that was entertaining. But then that led her to be like, do you still need me here? And it turns out Steve kind of is a shitbag because he didn't actually need her anymore. I'm going to talk about Steve and my wished for. Oh, cool. I can't wait. (laughs) I have two more things that I really liked. Norman's proposal. When he says thank you after she says yes, I about died. I about died. I just love them. And then they show Bestie Oliver like way outside. outside. Ah! So good. Norman also gives a really nice speech in this episode about how Gabe is the one with the least amount of reasons to have hope. And yet he's the one who's still singing. Mm -hmm. That whole interaction that was between Oliver and Norman Mm -hmm. basically told like Oliver... You know, like, called Oliver out, like, oh, like, you waiting for your mom to come home and waiting for your wife to come home from Paris. And Mm -hmm. oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those two. I love them together. Me too. I I feel like there are so many great things in this movie. And I don't want to, like, just gloss over Norman and Rita's proposal. I just, I am so excited for them. I'm excited for them, too. And I think having watched the next two movies, they really grow into their relationship so much. There is a scene in The Road Less Traveled. The Road Less Traveled digs so hard into Norman and Rita. I cannot wait to talk about it because there's some really cool moments. And then we get to the altar. So 
Norman and Rita are going to get their due. Okay, good. And in the end, let's talk about the big kiss. Yeah. Was it worth waiting for? Yes. Of course it was worth waiting for. And obviously the postables don't love it when we're critical. (laughs) And look, it comes from a place of... I think people need to understand the difference between watching a movie for enjoyment and watching a movie in order to review it and discuss it. Like you have to be able to poke holes in it. You have to be able to ask questions about it. So yeah, of course, as we're watching this and we know the kiss is coming, we're like, come on, where's the kiss? And they were just like, y'all gotta be patient. And look, we were, but I think the timing was right. I do think the timing was right. Their relationship is earned. It's fought for. Yeah, it was good. I, I like that whole scene where they kiss because it was like you could, the tension was building. And it was so out of Oliver's character to just kind of grab her and yeah lay one on her. Yeah, it was good. I love it. I love it. Like, I'm, I love you so much that it's spilling over into anger moment that is interrupted by a kiss. Let's talk wishes. Well, I recall liking steve in an earlier movie and now i just wish he would go away like please tell me he doesn't come back yeah i don't remember i think we might be done with him but he really leans into his villain role in this movie i just like why is he why is he being that way just to be a dick well i think it's a good way of showing that he's not the right guy for shane because he Mm. doesn't have her best interests at heart he was thinking about himself And as much as he tried to sell it, like, look how good you are at this. Look at how much of a difference you could make. That was him putting his desires for her on her life instead of listening to what she really wants and needs. And I think it sends home, like, he's not the guy. He's handsome. He's successful. And he's not the guy. But go away. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like... What's his name? Mark Valley. Like, he's yeah. a good actor. And I can't recall what he else has been in. Days of Our Lives. I, he's a good actor. Like, yeah. I, I yeah, mean, no shade to Mark Valley. Sometimes you play a villain. Yeah. But Steve, God, go away. I'm forever going to be burning him on that swing, making it squeak. Ugh. I I had posted a link to our original review of The Impossible Dream on Facebook recently. Mm-hmm. And the caption says, all apologies to Mark Valley, but we're not Team Steve around here. And some of one of the comments says, while Mark is great, postables agree on Snake Steve. I call him the faux Devereaux, because <laughs> from Days of Our Lives. And then another comment says, that's okay, most postables aren't either by his fan he is however incredibly easy on the eyes and i i don't disagree with that (laughs) but that actually makes a lot of sense because chrissy darnell who made the first comment she uses the snake emoji and i have seen that being used on twitter and some of the postables chats so now i know who that's referring to Ooh, hot tea hot tea do you have all right just one small one and it's just as for bj harrison Uh, On the one hand, I'm glad they used a powerhouse like BJ, even for a small role like Violet, because all she, her only purpose really as a character is to introduce us to Gabe and who he is. On the other hand, more BJ, please. I love her. Me too. I was really glad to see her. I want her in a starring, starring Mm -hmm. lead Mm -hmm. of a Hallmark movie, please. I know. I I hope she's like big in Holidays. You know, she's just warm and loving. I just love her. When I saw her, I was like, oh, B.J. Harrison. I was so excited. (laughs) All right. Let's talk about Did You See That? I really only have one. Mm. Um, Initially, my commentary about the directing of the Oliver and Shane moment at the end was in Did You See That? Just because I... It, to me, felt very much like foreshadowing. But my actual did you see that is Shane is opening a letter at one point and she uses a letter opener and you hear the like slice of the letter opener through the envelope, but the flap of the envelope just like falls open. Like it's... <laughs> oh, interesting. It's just- is this the first time we've seen Oliver in more casual clothes? He does not wear a suit and tie when they go to, they go to the like blues night at the restaurant. Outside of the time he went camping with his dad. Like, I don't think I've ever seen him not in a suit and tie. When he goes to the blues night at the restaurant, 
not with Shane? This is when Shane is gone and they're uh, actually trying to find aid and Ramon is holding like the the blues night at the at the Oh restaurant yeah 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 yeah. He hopes that Gabe will come and play. No, he's just there enjoying like the music, but he's wearing like he's wearing a collared shirt and a sweater, but not a not a tie. Do you like think that does. speaks to him like losing himself a little bit in Shane's absence? Hmm. Maybe. I'm sure I mean, I love to see it. Me too, but I'm sure the choice was on purpose. Like, there was a reason for it. Mm-hmm. You know? My second thing is, I continue to get a kick out of Norman's disdain for Ramon. Even still. Like, he is clearly with Rita. And so they're at they're at the restaurant and they're reading the letter. This is like at the top of the movie. And Ramon comes over and they tell Ramon to join them. And like, I call them Jeff. Norman is like, makes his face like he has to scoot over for Ramon to sit down. I just <laughs> love it. I love it so, so much. Is this going to continue on and on and on forever? Like, you got the girl, Norman. <laughs> It's so funny because Rita's so clueless. Like the way she continues to bring Ramon into their lives, particularly as the wedding planning gets going. It's after our discussion with Kristen and Crystal and Crystal talks about how the word she uses to guide her portrayal of Rita is innocence. I, I think that comes through so much in her relationship with Ramon. Yeah, totally. Love it. Okay, these are the last two things. They're not, they have to do with the movie, but not things I saw in the movie. They were things I saw on IMDb. Jeff Norman, he was a 2018 Best Supporting Performance by a male in a television movie, Leo nominee. Kevin Fair was also a 2018 Best Direction in a television movie, Leo nominee for this movie as well. Amazing. I love it. Yes. 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 So let's rate this bad boy. I. Give it five stars. I did too. Woo! <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to this episode of Girls Gone Hallmark. We will be back very shortly with our review of Home Again. If you love this podcast, the very best thing you can do to make sure more people get a chance to love this podcast is to rate us in the podcast app of your choice. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.